Um, but moving on to Mike's question and the first order of business for Liz Trust. Now, Mike says, with Therese Coffey, Suella Braverman, Brandon Lewis, James Cleverly and Jacob Rees-Mogg, all in top jobs and Johnny Mercer kicked out, have the ERG, the European Research Group, that right wing of the Tory party, have they taken over the cabinet? Ben, are we, have we seen a bloodless coup by the, the worst wing of the worst wing of the worst party that's well, been in government for the last decade? To my knowledge, only two of the, that five that uh, Mike mentioned were actually in the ERG, which is uh, Jacob rees Mock and Suella. Um, so no, it's not an ERG takeover. Um, Almost everyone in the Conservative Party now is in the Parliamentary Party is a Brexit here anyway. You know, Brexit's done. You can argue about how well it's working and the Northern Ireland Protocol and delays at passport control. Brexit's happened. There isn't that divide anymore in the Conservative Party. Um, I think what has happened is it's again a cabinet of loyalists. You know, she she purged the Sunak supporters such as Dominic Raab and Grant Shapps, brought in the people who switched to her very, either supported her from the start or switched quite early in the campaign, the leadership contest. So just like Boris Johnson did, she has surrounded herself with people she knows aren't going to try and stitch her up or stab her in the back. The problem with that is, have you got someone who can pull you up and tell you you're going down the wrong path? Or have you got a cabinet of yes men and women who just tell you what you want to hear? Exactly. Um, Abraham you know, Lincoln had a, had a cabinet of rivals, which he thought was a more productive way of of doing things and he, yeah you know there's Alistair Campbell who obviously wasn't in the cabinet but was director of communications uh he cast himself in the role of someone who could say uh something I can't say at this time in the morning um, <laughs> prime minister but you know some, something along the lines of you've got this wrong prime minister well has Liz Truss got those people around her who can say that to her looking at the cabinet it doesn't appear she does so far oh, no well um well her first order of business was appointing this new cabinet the aforementioned therese coffee is deputy prime minister yeah. and as a morbidly obese cigar smoker was a clear shoe in for health secretary um there's also plenty of bryce johnson's worst ideas have been turfed out bye-bye dominic Raab. bye-bye uh, but some did get promoted but we do have it's got to be said i'm coming to alan's quote next question next but ben we've got no white males in the four great offices of state for the first time in history. And if Labour was in government right now, they couldn't do that, could they? No, I mean, we were talking about this in the office last night. Um, it's the first time in history, no white man in at least one of the four great offices of state, which is Prime Minister, Chancellor, Home Affairs and the Foreign Office. Um, now, that, for all the criticisms are rightly levelled at the Conservatives on certain issues. You cannot, on this, fault them on the meritocracy of getting ethnic minorities into very high profile jobs. And that will encourage more, or it should encourage theoretically more ethnic minorities to vote Tory if they see um, a brown face, a black face on the TV, at the dispatch box, making des decisions that affect us all, talking about policy. And, and they are there, they're there, not because of the colour of their skin, but because of, as Liz Truss sees it, the merit. They are there on merit. Um, and no, Labour has a woeful record on you know, the Tories have provided us with the only three women who've ever been prime minister. Yeah. It's, it's awful that Labour can't say that. And every time Labour tries to attack the Tories on uh, on diversity, it will fall flat until they have a, a woman prime minister. Yeah, and so they've, I think they've only got one person of colour on the front bench as well at the moment. So it's... Um, in, our group, in, um, in, in one of those four yeah. yeah, Yeah, uh, and it's... it's, um, it's pretty stinky on Labour's part not to do a bit more about that um although it's also I think uh patronizing to assume that someone is going to vote for you just because they share your skin color I think I think people of color yeah, have that, yeah. more wit than that to be honest um but uh Alan says how is the sacking of Johnny Mercer going to affect the veterans community especially the nuclear veterans campaign of which he was a great supporter and advocate our viewers of the show know that um that's something that i report on a lot and that we've covered that a lot johnny mercer has been doing a lot of work in the last few weeks behind the scenes to get some kind of justice for nuclear veterans before the new prime minister came in but he did not go quietly it should be said into that good night on the back benches last night when he was uh fired as veterans affairs minister he posted this long personal statement in which he declared himself fairly appalled at the general state of things and urged all those in high office who trade on their time he said in the armed forces 
to extract digit from rectum and actually show that they care about the veterans community. Um, but that's in itself pretty extraordinary, Ben. But his wife, Felicity, went one step further on Twitter and posted a picture. Look at that. Likening Liz Trust to Beaker from the Muppets and calling her an imbecile. Uh, he asked her, why would you do this? Who's going to be better at this role than me? Which of your mates gets my job? And Liz said, I can't answer that, Johnny. Uh, ben, this is the first time I can remember a political spouse being this outspoken since Christine Hamilton and her cardigans. Uh, but it's the second time Mercer's been sacked this year, so he's probably quite annoyed. Um, is he with Boris going to be perhaps a, a very loud noisemaker on the back benches if he wants to be? Is this a is this a sign that she's already causing massive divisions and the wheels are falling off her government? Yeah, sacking. So Johnny Mercer's a bit of a loose cannon, right? To to, to use the, uh, the military vernacular, he's a former army captain. He's very outspoken. He represents uh, Plymouth Moorview, um, and yeah, he's he's. He is very vocal for supporting his old comrades um, in the, the armed forces, which is fair enough. Um, as veteran affairs minister, he was obviously very close to, to veterans, served alongside many of them, spoke very passionately in Parliament, initially on the back bench, and then on the front bench about why the country, the government, his government, should be doing more to support veterans. Um, he resigned a while back over the, from Boris Johnson's government over the, the uh, Northern Ireland prosecutions um, arising from the Troubles. Uh, and then he went back as Veteran Affairs Minister just after everyone else resigned. Um, Boris Johnson asked him to come back. So for two months, he's been back as Veteran Affairs Minister. Now Liz Truss has sacked him. And obviously, he's gone off on one in that resignation letter, which totally understandably he's upset. And yeah, he thinks he can do the best job. I mean, I think even Johnny Mercer would admit he ha does have something of an ego, but that doesn't mean he's wrong about it. Um, and, you know, I actually quite like him and I respect his outspoken views. I think he actually said something quite disparaging about me on Twitter once, which I don't hold against him. Um, we had but, a rap on Twitter once as well. We now text each other, it's fine. <laughs> but his um, his wife, Felicity, is an absolute gift to journalists. Like, we, you know, this is the, the most high profile intervention she's done on Twitter. But for months and months, she's, she's been very amusing on social media, uh, commentating on the state of the party and various other things. I don't know if you remember back uh, during the Six Nations, uh, Johnny Mercer had been out, uh, watched the rugby, and then his football team, which I think is Plymouth, he supports, um, they played a, an FA Cup match, and Johnny had had a, a few drinks, it's fair to say, and then fell asleep on the sofa back in his constituency home, and then the phone went, and it was the Prime Minister who wanted to talk to him, and apparently he spoke <laughs> to the Prime Minister, and woke up the next morning, had no idea what they talked about. And how do you know all this? Because Felicity posted it all on Twitter with a picture. Thanks, Flick. Well done. Um, but to answer Anna's question and more seriously, I think it is probably going to is going to affect the nuclear veterans and other veterans, because what's happened is Veterans Affairs, which was in cabinet under this very last reshuffle that Boris Johnson did in, in, the, in the body of Mercer, has been handed to someone called James Heapy. Now, he was a minister for the armed forces, a junior minister in the MOD. And this job, which was in the cabinet office, has now been shifted over to the MOD and given to this guy who already had another job. So veterans affairs have now been, if you like, just downgraded into a job share um, uh, by, with someone who, if you uh, go through his history, um, is he is a major, he served in Iraq and Afghanistan, but is a member of the Rifles. They're not quite the same part of the army that Mercer was from. And, um, well, I won't say what I think of him, but I know what some people in the military think of him.